Hello. We want to welcome you to United Church of Hyde Park. The last couple of days have been so beautiful outside. You can walk with your coat open. One of the wonderful things about cold weather is that when it gets slightly warmer, it feels like spring. So the weather of these past couple of days have been beautiful, and I hope that many of you have been outside and taking advantage of this wonderful weather. Weather makes a difference. Scientists or psychologists will tell you that in winter, in climates where it rains a lot, it impacts people's moods. And so this increase in temperature has made us a little bit more happier if you were able to get out in it. So the weather matters. I want to say that coming to church on Sunday matters as well. Being a part of United Church of Hyde Park matters. Some people may think it doesn't, but coming to church on Sunday, gathering together, checking in with one another, even virtually, listening to songs, being reminded of our values, gathering together once a week, it matters. You matter, and we're so glad you're here today with us in community. We welcome you to United Church of Hyde Park. We hope you're taking advantage of the weather, but we're glad you're here with us on this morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome.
We are calling you to worship. We are calling you all to worship. We enter into this responsive reading together. Here at the outer limits of Lent, we are called to walk. To the paper thin edges which cut us to the soul, to the workplaces which weary us, to the people who confuse us, to the faith which threatens us. Here at the corner of steadfast love and faithfulness, we are called to wait. When our clenched stomachs awaken us in the moments of unbearable sorrow with the angels who would carry us. Here where time is fulfilled, where God's kingdom is as near to us as our neighbor, we begin Lent with the beloved whose tears wash away our fears. With the, with the God, God who will, will not, not let, let go, go of our, of our hands. hands. The scripture today is from Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 26 to 27. I will read from the Inclusive Bible. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple who he loved standing there, he said to his mother, Here is your son. Then he said to his disciple, Here is your mother. From that moment, the disciple took her into his household. Amen. This is my privilege today to share some of my thoughts at our church. From last week, Reverend Charlene started the last word series for the Lent season. Each week, we will read a sentence and reflect on our history and context. According to Gospel John, the, the scripture today might be the last word that Jesus spoke to his mother Mary 
although it's very short. At the same time, this might be the, also the last time he can spoke to his disciple, the beloved one, although it was still very short. Before I jump into the scripture, let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. I would like to share a story from Taiwan and led to the reflection on the scripture today. Mrs. Gui Lin Hun was born in 1919, Taiwan. She graduated from she graduated from Keio University in Tokyo, Japan. She and her husband, Dr. Gui Zhonghuan, attend the same school, and her husband became a medical doctor afterward. They live in Japan on a clinic and they also work in different hospitals. After World War II, they left the medical they felt the medical need from their hometown, Taiwan, and decided to move back. On March 18, 1947, two o'clock in the morning, Dr. Gui Zhonghuan, who was also the superintendent of Yilan Hospital on the east coast of Taiwan, was taken by soldiers Dr. Gui was also elected as the chair of the Yilan 228 Incident Committee who helped to communicate between the government and the people in that region. No soldier broke the window and the gate by force. They covered Dr. Gui's eyes and sealed his mouth. Before he was taken, he told to his wife, I did nothing wrong. Don't worry, just wait for me. The other day, his body was found in the square downtown Yilan, buried with many other bodies. Dr. Gui was murdered. His widow, Miss Gui, had to leave their home and move to another place to start over. She raised her daughter alone her daughter, daughter Margaret Lu, became a medical doctor just like her father. The daughter never saw her father and had no idea what's happening to her father. After she got married and moved to the United States in 1974, she asked her mother about her father. Miss Gray started to tell her the story and how she found the body, how her husband was targeted by the KMT government, and the violence that night. Only one of Dr. Gray's colleagues would like to give hands to them to help them to bury the body. Dr. Gray's colleague was disappeared afterwards. She also described the bloody clothes and the gunshots all around the dead body, and also explained why she refused to speak in Mandarin in the rest of her life. The February 28th incident, or called the February 28th massacre, was an anti government uprising in Taiwan that was violently suppressed by the Chinese Nationalist Party so-called Kuomintang, KMT-led Republic of China government, which kills thousands of civilians, begins on February 28th, till May 16, 1947. The number of Taiwanese deaths from that incident and massacre was estimate, uh, estimated to be between 18,000 and 28,000. The massacre marked the beginning of white terror, in which tens of thousands of other Taiwanese went missing, died, or were imprisoned. 
In the meantime, KMT-led government deployed martial law in Taiwan from 1949 to 1987. The incident at Masaka is one of the most important events in Taiwan modern history and was a critical moment for Taiwan independent movement. Since 1995, February 28th became the National Memorial Day announced by the first Taiwanese elected president. However, till today, KMT party still does not want to share any critical document with the current government regarding how KMT wipe out all the local leaders on the island intentionally and systematically. People who were born before 1945 were called Taiwan-born Japanese. Their nationality was Japan. They were never treated as a royal citizen. In 1945, they were forced to become so quote called Chinese while Japan surrendered to the United States. The Chinese Nationalist Party took over Taiwan by following the command given by General Douglas MacArthur. I have no idea about the massacre or the identity shifting until high school, while Chiang Kai-shek, the leader of KMT party, one of the KMT military commander during 228 massacre died in 1975. My grandpa said to my papa, what a great news since they came to our place. I asked my papa why I never learned it from school nor from the family. He merely told me none of us would like your generation to suffer or to be murdered, just like other authoritarian countries People suffered, nothing they can do, but keep waiting and waiting and waiting till the detectors passing away. I also realized there were more hidden stories in my family afterward. I noticed those silent words from the conversations among, among my f four uncles and five aunts. However, I could not reconstruct those puzzles into a whole picture after all of them have died. Till today, I'm still haunted by those fragments. In the first century, the Jews were ruled by themselves under the Roman Empire. Jesus and his Israeli Roman people were also the same. The political conflict were caused by personal interest among different groups. However, Jesus might be a leader of a smaller group and people call it Jesus movement, the rebel or rebellion, who identify, uh, who identify themselves as pursuing the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus was betrayed by one of his disciples suffered from political and religious conflict, and eventually died on the cross. The scripture today was the last word he told to his mother and his beloved disciple, according to Gospel of John. When Jesus saw his mother, the disciple who he loved, standing there, he said to his mother, He is your son. Then he said to his disciple, Here is your mother. For that moment, the disciple took her into his household. There's Mary, Jesus' mother. He's one of the key persons who witnesses Jesus' movement. He raised him up, told Jesus how to read, also asked him to transfer water into wine the first miracle in Jesus' ministry. She also accompanied Jesus till his crucifixion. In some tradition, Mary was called the mother of God. That represents the importance of this female figure in Jesus' ministry and the church theology. 
The flyer on, of the worship today on Facebook and YouTube is a painting in the 13th centuries from Eastern Church tradition. I took it at Art Institute Chicago. In that painting on the left is Mary holding baby Jesus. On the right, it is the crucified Jesus, the crying Mary, and some others. That female figures connect the beginning and end of Jesus' mystery. Mary, who witnessed her son's death, felt a terror and a sorrow. Very few people stay till the very end. Why were they not there? Were they afraid of the Roman soldier and the Jewish community? Was that a shame to be recognized as Jesus' friends, disciples, or relatives? Would that bring them trouble? Mary lost her husband, Joseph, and now she lost her son. She was alone herself. Then there was another key person, Jesus' beloved disciple, who was also with Jesus while he was crucified. He was one who laid right next to Jesus at dinner, the one who laid on his chest, the one who asked Jesus, who will betray you? The one who ran to the tomb before Peter and the rest of the disciples. As a rumor said, that beloved disciple won't die. According to Gospel John, chapter 21, verse 23, theologians have debated and trouble to understand who would that beloved disciple be? Is he John, the author of the Gospel? Or is he Lazarus, the one Jesus cried for? Martha and Mary sent a message to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, the one you love is sick. But why Jesus' beloved disciple is nameless? We cannot read anything more than that. However, the, this, the scripture does not provide us a better question, a better answer. Jesus said, this is your son, this is your mother, to Mary and the beloved disciple. It sounds like a queer family arrangement to me. It's a portal chosen family that the outcasts could gather together and help each other. It's an outcast perspective beyond the master narrative. There's a space for them. I could see a queer story and courage revealed by the woman and a queer companion. A female disciple, like Mary, mother of God, was not appreciated in church history, at least in the Protestant tradition. Even in some of the Christian denominations, there's no female clergy at all. It has become a long history that male clergy and leaders dominate the Christian churches. Till today, we can learn from our denominations. Reverend Margaret Allen Toner is the first ordained Presbyterian minister in the United States, 1956. United Methodist Church, in which the ordination of women has occurred since it was created in 1968. I think UCC, United Church of Christ, is the same, started from 1957. However, there were three times more male ordained ministers than female ministers in the PCUSA today. 1.5 times more male in UMC, one time more male in UCC. It seems in our denominations, female voices, they are still marginalized. It's not unfamiliar for LGBT Christians to resonate with the beloved disciple's narrative. He must be a queer disciple, and not appreciate, appreciate folk in the community, 
but he has a special connection and a relationship with Jesus. Although his name was covered and forgotten by the church history, none can get rid of it completely. He's still a beloved disciple there. Even in Jesus' narrative, the beloved disciple was silent and unknown to the public. LGBTQ people might have the same experience. You can contribute to the church, but you won't and shouldn't be recognized as your real identity. We LGBT Christians witness the crucifixion of our people, the exclusion from the church, culture, and society. One of the theologians, Donald Boisvert, described the image of Jesus, the beloved disciple, saying, It is, however, a beautiful image, a deep and touching affirming of our central place as gay men in the heart of God. We might assume in 2021, everything gonna be all right. UCC's Open Affirming Coalition project start from, start from 1985 and is the most successful LGBT program among all the mainline denominations. However, there were only 30% of UCC congregations self-declare open affirming. Does that mean only 30% of the UCC congregation could be home and safe place or family for LGBT folks? Our church affiliates with three denominations. One of them, UMC, was facing a critical decision this year. It is the courage that the queer folks and allied would like to recognize the importance of queer voices in the church and proclaim that everyone should be treated like human beings equally. I was told the UMC General Synod was postponed again till next year. A survey done by UCC, EOCA, and the DOC Disciple of Christ, Evangelical Lutheran Church in, in uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, point out those who self-declare LGBT open affirming congregation are more vibrant and have more energy to adjust themselves to different challenges, and most of them show different increase in different aspects. The title of the sermon today is Sayonara Zai Hui La. It means goodbye in Japanese and Taiwanese. Sayonara Zai Hui La. This is the one word said by many people who were removed and then displaced in Tutu A Maska. Unfortunately, some of them did not have any word for their family or friends. Some of, them, some of their body were found in public parks and squares, some in the field, some in the river, the ocean. Some of them are still unknown. People who lost their relative during Tutu A Masga were silent for a long time. They were labeled bad people and had to carry stigma and shame in the rest of their whole life. However, the story I share today, Mrs. Gui took on the burden of the family and raised their daughter. It was until they left Taiwan in 1975, the story was told. Mrs. Gui died several years ago and she was a member of the Taiwan Presbyterian Church of the Greater Chicago, PCUSA. It is a Christian church who become the community and give the support and companion to her. It was a Christian church who become the only helper when nobody would like to give the hand to survivors, the family and their friends. Her daughter, Dr. Lu, live in the West Coast now. He published Miss Gray's diary in the 
Memora two years ago. This book describes her life in three different nations, Japan, came to late Taiwan and the United States, and the identity conflict and all the challenge and the sorrows, and the eagerness of the truth and the justice. Their daughter, Dr. Lu, continued the work of the restorative justice and the revelations of the true history of the 228A massacre. Dr. Gui's story was also collected in Formosa Betrayed, page 306. George H. Kerr is the author, published in 1965 in the United States. Lots of the survivors and the families would have the same meal today, the day when their relatives were taken. They would gather together, share the meal, tell the story, and share the memories. They keep doing this in, remember, in remembrance of their relative. The connection between the narrative of Jesus, Mary, and the beloved disciple and the Tutu'e Maska in Taiwan are at least vital for me. Do you hear the sorrow on the streets? Do you notice the silence whisper in your dream? We are the disciples and the followers of Jesus and the gathering as a Christian community. Should, how should we continue Jesus' movement, which is to bring the kingdom of God, the love and justice on the earth as it is in the heaven? At the same time, our church community should continue to be the family and home for all who is in need, especially nobody, those, those people, nobody would like to give them a hand. Jesus said, this is your son and this is your mother. What would those stories we share with our friend and chosen family today? Jesus is beloved disciple won't die. As long as we keep telling those stories about Jesus' movement, carry on Jesus' mystery, and carry for the chosen family. Jesus said, this is your mother, this is your son, and Jesus' the beloved disciple won't die. Amen.
about you all, but I feel a shout coming on here. <laughs> God's eye is on the sparrow, and God watches over. I don't know about you, but sometimes that's been the thing that has kept and held me together, is knowing that God's eye is on the sparrow, and God watches over us all. What a blessed testimony. We come to offering time, and Wei-Jin question kind of sits with me. How do we care for those on the margin? How do we care for those voices that are less heard? How do we care for the LGBTQ? How do we care for females? And even more poignantly, how do we care for people who live on the street? How do we care for the homeless? How do we care for those that have voices talking to them? I hope it is a question that we sit with because sometimes it's in the sitting, not rushing, but just in the sitting that the still voice of God speaks to us. One of the ways, though, that we respond to that is we give. We share our financial resources so that we are able to do the little that we do. And so we invite you into that continued faithful response of sharing your financial resources with us so that we can do that little in the world that we pray makes a difference. We invite you on this morning to share your resources. It's offering time.
in between, God, bless these gifts with your love so that we might share them quite openly with all who need your change. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We have a few announcements and joys and concerns, and then we will move towards dismissing you into the world. Today, our, uh, uh, our minister of the word, uh, Wei Jin, sharing Wei Jin Chin, shared a message with us. He is a member who, uh, who is a person who's in training to become ordained. That means he feels a call, a gravity, to becoming an ordained minister. Um, Wei Jin began a journey a couple of years ago and is close to becoming ordained and it will be a wonderful celebration in our church. He comes up for his last step in that process to becoming ordained on April the 5th. It's a Monday. It's the Monday after Easter. I know you're going to be still excited, but it's the Monday after Easter, 6.30 p.m. We will be doing a virtual Zoom call. And the whole of churches on the south side will gather and ask him questions. And I hope that United will be there. So I've been sharing this date. I hope that we will have 30 people from the United Church of Hyde Park. So please mark that on your calendar and more information will be forthcoming. There are joys and concerns in our congregation. This week we want to celebrate with Geraldine Reed that her birthday will be March the 3rd. Happy, happy birthday. We hope that you're listening on today and we hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful birthday. As well, a sadness on this week is that Jesse Bradford, one of our strong, dominant church members, transitioned. That means he gave up the race on this side and passed away. We are definitely sad and grieved by that loss. I'm going to ask that you lift up his family, um, that you reach out. I know that money helps, dishes of food help, things that we do. So sometimes we pray and we think that's enough, but sometimes our prayer is to give and to share or to give a phone call and just let someone know. So this week we're lifting up his whole family. We are especially lifting up those that have journeyed with us, Prentice and Roman and Bertha, and uh, again, lifting up that whole family um, while they grieve the loss of an important person in their family and still journeying with, uh, with uh, Carol as well, who is um, uh, seeing more and more of the Alzheimer take control of her life. So we lay that at your feet as a concern. A lot is happening in our congregation. We still are doing our podcast. We have out Crooked Courage with Angela Marks. She's the VP of Real Estate Operations at the University of Chicago. We'd love for you to catch that episode. It is out. You can catch it on YouTube or Facebook, um, many of the places, and sometimes we also share it with you on our weekly newsletter. Also, Contemporary Issues is continuing to read the book, Dead Land. They have a conversation about it, and they are meeting also March the 4th, 11 a.m. You can check our Facebook page or our website for more information about that. After service every Sunday, people get together and talk. It's called the Coffee Hour. Um, we don't publicize it a lot, but if you want to, there will be information that comes up, and you can call in on Zoom and check in with people and have a chance to have a little bit of conversation. And every Sunday before service at 930, we have a Sunday school, and uh, it's uh, led by a wonderful professor or former professor of the University of Chicago, and he really does a wonderful Bible study. So if you're looking to take your spiritual journey a little bit deeper, we encourage you to check that out on Sundays at 9.30 on Zoom. If you are interested in becoming a part of this congregation or you want to know more about us, there's a welcome card you can complete. It gets you on our email. It'll get you a phone call. And as well, we do new members classes. And we are about to have a new member welcoming soon. So if you're wanting to be a part of our congregation, please, please let us know. We're so happy for all of you that come. You can be a visitor for a lifetime. But if you want to make it more official, we love that as well also. This is the last day of Black History Month, and I hope that you have been learning about black history. We know that black history is not contained to the month of February. 
There are a lot of wonderful movies. Billie Holiday has come out. One Night in Miami. Uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. All of these are in different uh, stations. Different Netflix, HBO, Amazon Prime, TV. There are a lot of wonderful movies out there that tell and begin to expand the narrative of black history. I encourage you to watch those or pick up a book or just have a conversation with someone that's been around the planet for a while. Again, black history is not just Feb February and African Americans are more than slavery. So if that's all you know, hey, take a chance and learn more. We thank you for stopping by United Church of High Park. United matters and us gathering together matters. And we're so glad you spent your time with us today. Now we come to this time in our service where we hate to say goodbye, but we're about to close and send you into the world and send you into community. Thanks for joining us again. Let's pray. May God bless you and keep you. That you be brave in Jesus' mystery and telling the true stories. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you, as well as you care for your chosen families. May God look kindly upon you and give you peace in the midst of terror and the tremble times. Amen. Amen.